working with people when they're dying. You really become aware that death truly is a part of life. That again, none of us escape that. And although it's hardest for us left behind, it is just a true blessing for our loved ones that pass. There are many situations that we find in hospice that even though patients are gone, I think they use so many means of ways to let us know they're alive. My name's Vicki, I'm an RN and I'm a hospice nurse. I had a very profound um, experience recently with a patient that her primary diagnosis was liver cancer. She told me that she was dying and I don't think she had told her family. So I discussed it with her family what to expect and then I continued to see her. Because of the liver cancer, she was this deep orange sweet potato color. Her face was completely swollen. Her eyes were completely swollen. She didn't look anything like herself. So I went into another part of the room to discuss with the family what to expect from there. And while we were talking, we heard, heard her breathe her last breath. We were just all celebrating and rejoicing. We were just so happy because she had been ready to go for quite a while. The family was ready for her to go. And it was just such a relief for everyone. And her timing was just perfect. And I had told the patient and her family, you know, God's timing is always perfect, that she had fought the good fight. So the family called the rest of the family, and I called the funeral home and made the arrangement. Before they took her, they told the family that they could take as much time as they needed to say goodbye. So each family member went over and kissed her and told her, no more pain, no more suffering. And as we looked over at her, she had completely changed in appearance. All of the swelling in her face had completely disappeared. Her eyes were completely, just naturally, restfully closed. Her mouth that had been gasping for air had closed. And I had told the family at the moment of passing, we may not be able to keep her eyes shut because they lose that muscle strength. And very rarely can we actually keep their mouth closed because they lose that and you can't keep their mouths closed. But she was just so beautiful and her eyes were closed and she had no swelling and she just looked like she was sleeping and she just looked like a perfect rose. And there was no doubt where she was and that she was just, you know, peaceful and in heaven with the Lord. That experience was just so meaningful to me and when you see after they pass that they are no longer, their body is no longer contorted, but that they just have a beautiful little smile, it's just so obvious where they are. I've had a patient that was blind, and before she passed, she was saying how beautiful it was and that she could see, see the beauty of heaven. And it was just really obvious that they, there is a heaven, and it's peaceful, and there is no more suffering, no more pain. So those experiences will always stay with me. My name is Dana Campbell. I am a, a spiritual care coordinator and a bereavement coordinator. The patient that I just saw recently really had an impact on me. Um, she had pancreatic cancer, was in a lot of pain, but despite that, she had such a powerful faith. Um, she would lay in bed and I would go and sit next to her and we would pray and we would read scripture and whenever I would read scripture she insisted on getting her own Bible out and going along scripture with me and sometimes we would just read together. She was a little disappointed that I didn't have anointing oil with me but she had her own little bottle of anointing oil which she actually got out of bed went and got she rubbed it on my forehead I rubbed it on her forehead and we sat there and prayed together and uh, just felt such a profound connection with her at that time because I knew what a powerful faith that she had. But even towards the last, when she was barely able to move around, she still enjoyed the prayer and scripture time. When she passed, uh, a lot of family came around. There was a lot, of, a lot of drama, a lot of crying. And I went to the funeral home afterwards and uh, I had made a good connection with her husband as well, who was also very strong spiritually and pretty much her sole provider. He introduced me to his daughter, 
and I had not met her prior to that. And I introduced myself to her, and uh, she looked at me and she said, oh, I know who you are. I read through my mom's journal, and in her journal she mentioned you, and she mentioned the good times that she had had sharing the gospel with you and how strengthened she felt by doing that. Most times when I go to funerals following my patients, uh, I handle it pretty well, but I really kind of lost it a little bit when I got to the casket to talk with her. I don't know, a feeling came over me that we had really made a, a, a spiritual connection and one I think that'll probably always stay with me. I don't know that uh, it will ever go away. You know, I think it meant that, number one, we're all in this together. Um, you know, we have so much to offer one another and, and we may think that we reach a point in our lives where we can't offer anything anymore. I mean, she was bedridden, but she was still ministering to me. I see so many different things with patients. Patients that do not experience a strong faith in Jesus, there is so much hopelessness and darkness, really. When I see a patient like this lady, um, it brightens my spirit and helps me to realize that it's important for us to be out there sharing Jesus in any way we can through how we live because I don't want to see anybody reach that point and be hopeless. I've had other patients. I actually had another patient a number of years ago that was really growing in her faith at the time she passed away and uh, she was just bubbling over even though she was days away from passing away and she actually uh, gave me a little memento that's a little clear stone and it just says love and she wanted me to have this because she realized that just as I was saying that we're all in this together and we all share in this love and I just carry it with me as a reminder it, it made me realize that Truly, death is a part of life, and death is simply a transition. Um, the life we have here on this earth is very short. It's just a breath, uh, you know, just passing. And, and what's going to happen is we're going to go through that experience of death, and then there's going to be much more time to have to spend with our loved ones. I believe that with all my heart. My name is Kathy and I am actually a graduate of Franciscan University. I graduated from Franciscan in 1988 in the BSN program and I currently am uh, the founder and uh, the CEO of a local hospice in our community. Uh, I've actually been in hospice for probably about 32, 33 years. So I've had a lot of experiences that have been life changing for me. One particular situation that I can think of that really was life changing for me because, you know, the average burnout rate for a hospice nurse is about eight months. And I had been on about nine years in hospice and I was really just about ready to retire from that area of nursing. I had a, an individual that came to my office and said, uh, Kathy, I just wanted to tell you, there's a, a friend of mine that needs hospice services. She was only 47 years old. She had rectal cancer that had metastasized to her liver. She was young, she was married, she had uh, two children, uh, a boy and a girl, and the friend said, it needs to be you to go and talk to her. And I thought, okay, well, I'll go ahead and I'll, um, I'll visit. I made that visit and my life was forever changed. When I walked into the room, um, the patient looked at me and she started to immediately cry. And I went over and I knelt down next to her and I said, you know, what's the matter? And she looked at me and she said, I'm afraid of you. And she said, I'm not ready to die. And I said, I understand that right now you're up and about, you're doing well, but eventually there will come a time when you are bed bound and this is no longer quality life and you will be ready to go. Um, we had her probably for about three months as a patient. So one of the things I said to her was, is that I want to be with you holding your hand when you take your final breath. 
And she said, well, of course, you know, I want you to be there. And I said, well, listen, if you look out there and you don't see me out there, you just better hang in there and wait for me. I think a lot of times what people don't realize in hospice, we as hospice staff also become very, very close with our patients and families. And we talk about giving patients permission to die. And that's one of the things I've learned throughout the years is that in educating families that you need to do this, you need to let them go. Two days later, I got a phone call and I was told that she was actively dying and the family requested that I get to the house as soon as possible. I got there and when I got there, her husband was lying on the bed holding her in his arms and she just basically, you know, was unresponsive and I went in and I kissed her and I said, you know, it's me, I'm here, just want you to know. Somebody that was kneeling on the side of the bed got up and went out into the kitchen to get a cup of coffee. And at that point I thought, I'm gonna go over and kneel down next to her. And I, I went over and I got on the side of the bed and she was facing her husband this direction. And I said, it's me. And I put her hand in my hand. And as um, she was getting prepared to take her final breath, she rolled her head over, turned and looked at me and smiled and took her final breath. The ironic part was after she had passed, one of the things that I didn't even realize is that this patient loved hummingbirds. A day after her funeral, I happened to be at my mom's house and my mom had an awning over her back patio. And I had never seen a hummingbird before. And I was eating breakfast and I was sharing with my mom about this patient and her death and of course crying into my breakfast. I looked up and there was a hummingbird that flew under the patio uh, awning cover and flew right in front of the window, looked right in the window and then flew out. And um, it just was to me a consolation that it was her way of using a, a hummingbird to let me know, you know, that she was okay. The irony of it all was is that her husband had called me and said one night he was sitting on his back patio at his house. and was talking about her and um, the same identical thing happened. A hummingbird flew right in front of him. There are many situations that we find in hospice that even though patients are gone, I think they use so many means of ways to let us know they're alive. I've always believed that those who love us in this lifetime continue to love us in the next and they're praying for us and I think many times they're often very close at hand, especially when we need them. But what I've learned more than anything is, is that you learn about living by working with the dying.